Hello and welcome to part two of our buff system. In the last episode, we went through the process of setting up the buff system itself and in an abstract form, making it work. However, we now need to communicate that to the player via an online on-screen widget. So let's go through the process of setting up our buff tray and the buff icon. So now we've got the buff system working functionally. Now we need to make some sort of UI element that shows this to the player. So we're going to create a UI folder for our buff system. And in here, we're going to create a widget. And this will be our buff tray. I'll call it a buff tray. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I typically call it. We go to a buff tray here. And in here, we're going to have a canvas panel. As this will be our screen. And then we're going to have a vertical box, which inside is going to have two horizontal boxes. Let's put in horizontal box. And another one inside the vertical box. So a vertical box and two horizontal boxes. And I'm just going to put that into the top right hand corner of my screen here. I'm going to go to anchors and change it to the top right. We're doing control shift move it over there. And I'm going to change the size of it as well. So bring that down. So. And both of these horizontal boxes are going to be set to fill the available space. Okay. So continue to position that however you want. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. Um, and in a little bit. Like so. So the first horizontal box here is going to be our buff tray. So I'm going to rename this one buff tray. And tick that as a variable. The bottom one is going to be a debuff tray. And then tick this variable. File save. So when we add a buff to this, we need to know the buff itself and make the icon for it. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go to our content draw again, create another widget. And this would be W buff icon. And go in there. Now, this buff icon is going to consist of an overlay using the progress bar to show the cooldown of our buff. So how long it's got left before it wears off. So in here, you're going to have image. And then you're going to wrap that with an overlay. So wrap with overlay. And the image here, we want to make sure it's still stretched out the whole width. And we also want to have a progress bar on top of it as well. Okay, and again, stretch out across the whole thing. And the progress bar is actually going to change the direction we want to feel. So if I change this to like a small percentage like so, and imagine like the blue is our image of the actual icon. I'm going to go to its uh, bar field type and change that from bottom to top. Okay, so at 1% it's full. Uh, so at value of 1 it's full and then when the percentage hits down 0 it's empty. Okay. And I'm going to go to my style for my background image here. I'm going to change this to none. Okay, so I can see the image underneath. And the fill image is going to be changed dynamically based upon what buff it is. So we're going to go to my progress bar name here. I'm going to change this one to uh, buff lifespan bar and hit enter. The image itself in here will name as well image buff icon okay so i'm just going to bring in a couple of icons i can use for this uh give me a second um let me have a so i've brought in two icons here i'm going to be using for my buff and debuff so we've got the speed one i'm going to use here um so i'm going to put this in there for a template for now uh, so i can test this out so let's click on our background image here in my magic boots. I'm going to change it from fill screen, by the way, to desired on screen too. So we can see what it's kind of looking like. Um, let's make this whole thing a little bit bigger. So I'm going to right click on my overlay, wrap with, and do size box. In the size box, do wrap uh, width as I and override and height override. We'll change that to 64 by. 
Maybe 128 by 128, actually. That'll do. Okay, um, so I want this background image here to be more grayed out. So I'm going to go to its brush. Um, is Oh, sorry, I put that on the wrong thing. Uh, put that on the, uh, the bar there. Change that to... So image buff icon, we're going to change that to our boot. And I'm going to change the tint of it. So I'm going to bring that down. Tint there. Okay. Um, I can desaturate it further. Uh, maybe change the alpha a little bit. Whatever I need to do to get it looking like it's fading away. Um, and that's all I need to do for this. And then on the progress bar here, nothing on the background image, but the fill image will use the same icon. See it appearing there. Uh, now it looked like weird at the moment, and that's because it's set to draw as box. Change that to image, and you can see it now working out. And you see it's now blue, and the reason why it's blue is because the default fill color opacity is here. I'm gonna change it down to white, and now we've got this bar. I'm gonna fill up and deplete our foot here, file and save. So this thing needs to know what buff icon is it, uh, what which buff effect is it using. So if I go to my graph here, uh, on the pre-construct, we need to know the buff effect. So go to variables and create buff effect reference. And that's going to be buff effect. Buff type, that'd be great. There we go. And it's been object reference because it actually exists in the world. And we want to tie its lifespan to this progress bar. So on the buff effect there, uh, we want to be able to get the icon that this buff effect has. Let's go to the buff debuff effect parent class over here. And we're going to add a new variable to this one. And this is going to be the icon for the buff. So buff icon. And that would be a texture 2D. I'll save. So now if I go back to my buff icon. Yep. Yeah. I can take this out and get buff icon. And now we can set that to our various things here. So on my uh, image buff icon here, do this. Now I want to just affect on this image here, just affect the brush image itself. I'm going to keep the tint the same, everything else the same. Okay, it's just this I'm going to change. So if we take this out and do get brush. Yeah, we want to do then set members in slate brush. Plug that into our pre construct. Let me. Um, and then with it selected, if you go to the right and left hand side, sorry, you'll see the pins that you could have on here. And we only want the image itself. So we just tick that. And then we'll plug that in there. And that means it will only change the image here. We don't have to worry about anything else. Uh, next is the uh, progress bar. Take that out. And this one again, similar practice. You go to the bar here and you'll see that style with a fill image, and then you're setting members inside the fill image here. So we're going to take this out and do style, get style, and in there, we're going to do um, set members in progress bar style, and we're going to open up the fill image. And on here, you're going to do um, from buff lifespan up again, style, get, and from there, split. And you want just a fill image here. And that will go into set members in slate brush. And you'll plug that in between these two. I'll plug that into the fill image. So I'm setting members in both slate brush and then into the style of the whole thing here. And on the set members in slate brush, we can then tick on the image like we did with the other one, and it'd be the same thing. E. Oh, into there. Okay, compile and save that. Okay, so we've got a warning here saying that the brush is a read only property and cannot be modified directly. That's an issue because we want to change the brush here. But if we can't change it and it gives us this warning, 
we'll just remove that and we'll move this set members in a uh, thing here and instead we'll do set brush and in here you'll see set brush from texture do that and put that into our buff icon there and then we want to just set the tint of that as well so buff icon set tint color and i'm just going to go from tint color here make and i go to my des designer here and just copy what i've got set in that so we go to buff image brush and I'm going to copy value graph and paste it no, I don't Oh, that's so annoying. Okay, we'll just do this. Back it to the top. Okay. Graph. Oh, that. And that should clear the warnings. Yep. Cool. Okay, so that's that thing. Next thing is we need it to bind the lifespan of our buff effect on to the progress bar. So that'll be done on the tick event because we want it constantly updating that progress bar. On event tick, you know, drag out your buff effect. And just do a convert the value that it get just to make sure it's still valid. Um, on buff effect here, if it is here, we can go life span. And if you do get lifespan, this will be how much life it's got left in the actor. We also want to get the initial lifespan. How much did it start off with? And what we're going to do here is do something called a normalize to range. This will be the value. And the range max will be the initial lifespan. This converts it to a zero to one normalized value, which is what we want for our progress bar. So let's take out our progress bar and do set percent. And plug that in. It's valid. If it is not valid, that means the buff effect is now no longer existing. So on there, we're going to drag that out and do remove from I'll take off this the icon from the screen. Okay, so that's the icon done. We now need to be able to add the icon to our tray. Okay, there we go. We've got some work done on our UI. Ready to go. We're going to start working on the functionality to add icons to our screen. So in the next episode, you can find over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lely, where all my videos are available to patrons early before everyone else from just $1 a month. As a thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.